We're living in a new age of invention. Brilliant brains are no longer just holed up in leading the university labs or research facilities. Today, inventors are coming together in technology hubs like this to design, to help improve people's lives. It's actually working. That's so cool. For this series, we brought together seven of the UK's leading engineers, designers and computer programmers. Ta -da! I'm gonna make myself the guinea pig. They'll use cutting-edge science and technology to build life-changing solutions for people in desperate need. I don't know who to ask or where to go. In pain, uncomfortable. From helping individuals who are seriously ill. <laughs> Whoa! To solving issues affecting entire communities. Someone's either going to get seriously injured and can't get aid, or someone's going to die. They'll attempt to tackle major problems that have so far gone unsolved. I think I've created something really new and possibly revolutionary. The potential of this is massive. Fingers crossed nothing cracks or explodes. I'm Simon Reeve. Over the next nine months, I'll be working with this brilliant team. If they succeed, they could change these people's lives and the lives of many more. <laughs> this is the best thing that could ever happen to us. Keep going, keep going. Keep going, keep going. Our team's base is in East London. Known as a makerspace, it's one of a national network of inventors' hubs crammed full of the latest technology. It's from here that our seven leading inventors will attempt to create fixes for people with nowhere else to turn. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really excited about what we're going to learn. I can't wait to meet these people. The team includes a director from Microsoft, engineers who worked at Dyson's Innovation Labs, award-winning designers who've built everything from ambulances to earthquake sensors. Yeah, right, let's, let's get our sleeves rolled up and get stuck in. And the team are about to begin their third. They must find a solution for a partially sighted mum who's scared to leave home with her children. Ruby Steele will lead the case. She's a top design strategist and often the first port of call to decide the direction the team will take. Ruby, tell me a bit about your background. I've done a lot of work with um, older people, in particular um, my grandmother. I think you're always inspired by things that you know. One of the real handicaps for her was, was losing her sight. Um, she's now being classified as, as blind. We've come to Woking to meet partially sighted mother of two, Shamreen Hussain. Hello. Hello. Shamreen, hello. Hi, 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 hi. Oh my goodness, such excitement. <laughs> <laughs> hello, gentlemen. Hello. 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 <laughs> that is very hello. exciting. In terms of what makes things particularly hard, are you able to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, um, I've got something which is called uh, cone dystrophy. So it's, um, it's the cone cells in the retina, which is at the back of the eye which are damaged, and uh, I'm totally colourblind. Can you see us now? Or, yeah. And do you um, only see us, or are we out of focus? Am I in focus? I can't see fine detail, so my fine vision is um, very weak. Right. Um, but inside, when a room's really bright, I struggle because I get a glare, so everything's just become a blur. Her visual impairment makes everyday tasks like cooking a nightmare. What I do is I'll use my hands to, to um, know how far in I should be cutting. Mind your thumb! <laughs> yeah. that, was a, that was a nervous moment for me then. I could see that thumb. I kept wanting to pull it out of the way of the knife. I've got a slight chill going through me when I see you doing that. That's why I tend to avoid cooking. You try and stay out of the kitchen, you yeah, don't Yeah, I don't cook, my husband does it all. Mm. I've been in situations when guests have come, um, my brother-in-law, my husband, would do the joint cooking, and when they've come, I do the serving, so it looks like I've cooked. That's because of because the, the pressure... Because there's too much explain, explaining that I... It's not accepted for me not to be able to cook and not to be able to serve. So people genuinely big, don't know that you no. have a sight problem? They know I have a sight problem. They don't understand what it means. 
Shamreen can overcome most things in the home, but outdoors she struggles to cope. Hang on, hang on, don't run out. Now, what about obstacles on the road? Do you feel OK with...? No, like, um, the manholes and stuff, we just trip over them. Have you fallen over on the street? Oh, yes. <laughs> Have you? Yes. Have you hurt yourself? Um, many of times. Many times, really? Yeah. She doesn't want to use obvious visual aids like white sticks, guide dogs or support workers. She'd prefer something that keeps her impairment discreet. I feel quite vulnerable and um, very stressed. My stress levels are quite high. I mean, this feels like a much more difficult <laughs> environment for you to be in, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> Listen, you, you, I, I can feel you're getting stressed. <laughs> yeah. Are you all right? Yeah. Cool. Right, um, Maham, can you hold my hand? We're going to cross the road now. Good boy, good boy. Cone dystrophy is a hereditary disease, and Shamreen's son, Muham, has the same condition. Right, let's cross the road. OK. You're closing your eyes a lot more, aren't you? So you yeah. Can, am I yes. right in thinking you can see less now than... Than before. Than before, yeah, than in the house? Um, the road ahead is quite busy, so right. that's one of the main roads, and it's going to be very difficult to cross. So there's a car, a van coming from the right. Can you see the van there? Do you want us to cross? Yeah, so he okay. stopped. Yeah. He must have, like, given you indication to go. There so he probably a... waved his hand. Yes. He did, yeah. I don't tell you that. Yeah. All I see is a stop vehicle. Yeah. Do you do things like go to the park with them? It's not like an everyday thing. It's not every weekend thing. It has to be pre-planned and I need to help someone. I need to ask someone to drop me off or come with me. On the way home, the dangers for Shamreen and her boys are all too apparent. There's not a lot of room here, is there? No. I wouldn't want to be dragging two boys along no. here. With Shamreen and the kids safely back home, we bring an end to a stressful afternoon. It was quite distressing to see her like that. I really, I really I didn't want... I wanted to just take her out of it straight away. Take her back into the house? Take her back into the house. Um, but then that in itself is very telling mm. because it just shows that how trapped she is. What will you do from here? So I need to go away and digest all the information that we've got today. I want to share everything with the rest of the team and get some more, more input from the rest of their mm. expertise. I do think it would be really useful to do an audit of existing products and technology just to see right. how she reacts to them because... Products can... for uh, visually impaired exactly. people and blind people, right? Um, just because it's a kind of fast-track way to find out what works and doesn't work for yeah. her. Is the fix what you imagined or is it more complicated? It's a lot more complicated. It affects every aspect of her life, so mm. how do you decide which one of those you want to make better? Yeah. It's been three months since Ruby began researching Shamreen's case. Today, they've got together to look at existing kitchen technology for partially sighted people. Right. We have got a selection of products for you that we thought you might find useful when cooking. Um, these have all been designed for people with visual impairments, so they've all got a kind of little trick or feature. This is a talking labelling device, so it's supposed to be to help you know what's in different packets that you bring home from the shops. You press record. Test. And then the idea is that when you touch it... Test. OK, so we'll put one of the... Chickpeas in water. OK, now, if you touch that, it should work. <laughs> That's quite neat, actually. The pen labelling system could help Shamreen easily identify the ingredients in her cupboard. Chopped tomatoes. That's brilliant. I like that. Rice. Rice. Brilliant. From talking scales to ID pens, Shamreen tries a range of kit. It's all available to her through charities or the NHS. But until now, Shamreen has always said she wants to cope on her own. Oh, it vibrates as well. I think it gives me that guarantee that I know I'm not going to food poison my family. I can really depend on these products. I yeah. really am quite surprised. Right, I guess we want to go and taste the creation now. You've got your confidence in the kitchen now. Do you think that we can maybe push forward even further and find 
you know, more ways to give you what you really, the real crux of the matter, which is quality time with your kids, doing things that a mum would do. Do you feel, do you feel happy with that as a kind of moving forward? Definitely, it is being a mum for my kids and not using my disability as an obstacle. You know, the simplest things of taking them to a park, it should be something that I do with my eyes closed, let alone, let alone um, me trying to keep them safe and cooped up inside. And sometimes they're just bouncing off walls because they just need to, that fresh air and to be able to go out. I do really want to be close to my children. I think she spent her whole life hiding her disability and because of the kind of social stigma around it, we need to get her more confident and more independent when it comes to spending time with her kids and taking them out. Armed with a better insight into Shamreen's situation, Ruby begins to plan how the team might help her. How might we give her freedom to go out? How might we better educate people in her network? How might we make her take care of her children? make her feel secure and safe walking down the road. After discussions with the team, they come up with a solution. Basically, the idea is a an app that will, it's effectively like the pen friend that we tried, but it's like a kind of giant world version of that. So instead of labeling jars of food and all that kind of stuff, it's like labeling things that she might trip over, crossing roads, all that kind of stuff. Over the next few weeks, the team helped to develop an app using the existing global positioning system or GPS technology that's built into most smartphones. This is basically like an app version of the pen Man, for right. real life. And instead of the little stickers, yes, it's just using GPS, GPS coordinates. coordinates. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, there you go. I have a notification. They build a rough prototype. Ruby enlists the help of Lawrence, a visually impaired mobility expert who will test the GPS app for Shamreen. I think maybe we should uh, go out and give it a go. Over the next few hours, Ruby, Lawrence and his support worker, Narul, walk different routes around London. OK, and um, speaker. Point one. They lay down markers. Yeah, I guess here. here. Yeah. Point two. Well, could so we go all the way up to the door, maybe? OK. Point three. OK. And then retrace their steps, hoping the app will trigger an alert. Yep, should have been one around yep. here. Yep. That's... There it is. Oh, it has? Yep. Don't Excellent. <laughs> oh. It thinks it's point three, but it... OK, OK. At least it's picking them up. Yeah. OK, so I think we need to stop there. Um, I think there's quite a bit more work to do debugging this and getting it to work accurately. I think it's got a lot of potential, definitely. I think it's, it's going to have to be part of someone's mobility experience, really. We need to assess what's causing the delay. Is it the speed at which we're walking? Is it the radius around the pin? I'm beginning to realise why this hasn't been done before. But if you can do it, if you can crack it, it'd be really exciting, really, really useful. Lawrence has really helped work out what the ideal is in quite a lot of detail. So we know what we're shooting for, it's just about whether we can actually do it or not. Because at the end of the day, we are relying on satellites in outer space to tell us whether there is something that's three metres in front of us. I mean, it's really quite extraordinary. It's got this far, really. GPS doesn't work quite as well as Ruby had hoped. So the team turned to mathematician and physicist Dr. Sam Parkinson for help. GPS isn't totally accurate. The phone is going to know you're in an area. It won't know exactly where you are. It'll have a pretty good idea where you are, but it'll kind of say that are you anywhere within a circle within five metres of where you are. And that's like on Google Maps or something like that. That's when that's you get when the, the, big, circle grows the big and blue get, circle yeah, yeah. versus like the little pin. And it tends that's to get better with time. So like as GPS gets a fix, that gets smaller. The app needs to trigger an alert when it's closer to a marker, just three to five metres from an object rather than 10 to 20 metres. Sounds simple, but it requires complex computer code and algorithms. We kind of recognised that a really important thing for Shamreen was the ability to independently go out and mm. do the things that any mother would want to do, mm. like take her kids to the park. It won't 
totally replace something like a cane or a, or a guide dog or something like that. It's more a, a kind of aid memoir to help you use those mm. kind of tools as well. Exciting! Sharon! Hello. Hello. Hello! How are you? So, Ruby has done a lot of work on Have your behalf. Wait. I'm really sort of excited to try and give you something that might enable you to do even more because I feel like you've got that spirit already and it's just about giving you something else to just kind of like take it on and run with it, you know? Anything's a bonus. Mm -hmm. Any mm -hmm. little thing, even if it's one aspect mm -hmm. of, my, of my needs that you've got is mm -hmm. a bonus to me. <laughs> what the app allows you to do is enable you to identify things along the route that are going to cause a problem. Low walls, uneven pavement, lamp posts, trip, um, hazards. trip hazards. And you have a little super small and discreet wireless um, headphone Blimey. that you put in your, it's really small. Sorry, that's tiny. Yeah, so you put that in your ear, so it's really discreet. No one else knows that you're, that it's there. It's pretty high tech, eh? It is very high tech, <laughs> I think. Does that appeal to you? Definitely. And the fact that it's small, mm. it's, it's quite it's discreet. discreet. So this could be something magnificent. It gives Ruby, me that independence. That Ruby has created, eh? It sounds like you're going to invest in I, I am. I'm Ruby. already like, like, I could do this now. I just need a one go with I love it. No, I love the fact that you're coming up with lots of like ways that you want to be able to test yeah. it. And I'm really excited to see how you kind of get on with it, really. Thank you, Ruby, for giving this to me. And I can't believe that you've spent so much time. And I really do appreciate this. It means a lot to me. Oh, I think I need it. We head out so Shamreen can test her new app for the very first time. Where are we going? To the park. That's right, we're going to the park. No, the no. icon in the, for recording a tag is in the bottom right-hand corner there. Oh, OK. So what you do is you hold this down. OK, go. Top of White Rose Lane. From White Rose Lane. <laughs> there you go. Success. Yeah, so we can label the lamppost okay. as one of the and tags. Lamppost to the right hand side. I know I need to stop and look for cars. Exactly. Go. Drop curve to Wild Bank Court. Okay, and go. Road ah. Island. Entrance to the park. Having laid down all the markers, it's time to see if Shamreen's new app actually works. Oh, the lamppost to the right hand side. <laughs> oh, it's buzzing. Manhole cover. Oh, manhole, manhole cover. cover. Oh, it's cover. it's, over it's the one coming, it's here. coming up, yeah. So the, the idea is it's that it's a warning yeah. for all these things so that you've got a bit of a chance to kind of prepare. It's telling me about the grass curve coming up. Yay! To Just the left. Yep. Brilliant. Does this feel like I like, this could I like work? the fact that it gives me a couple of minutes warning before the yeah. uh, before I good? hit the obstacle. It's a, it's a moment, isn't yeah. it? And it it's just feels like just the it's right just amount like of I time. I can focus on that area. Shamreen, how to Bangkok. It's telling me it's the drop curve coming up. Brilliant. It even looks as though you're approaching it more confidently, Shamreen. Yeah. <laughs> so now <laughs> it's coming up. <laughs> So you just already heard. Oh, that's so it's such a relief saying like entrance to the park, you know it's coming. It's, it's giving me a guide. Brilliant. We're here! We have made it to the park! Yay! Yes! Yay! Come in on, the just... park! No dogs that now! <laughs> wow, that looks fun! Yeah! It worked! It did, it did work! So you've done a good job there. <laughs> <laughs> you've done a really good job there. Oh, yeah, I'm really, really pleased. Yeah, it's really a big potential for this. For me. Um, and I think other people, even like sighted people, can take advantage of this mm, as well. Mm. It's given me the um, independence that I wanted, and not only just the independence, the confidence. The confidence I will be able to take my kids and enjoy going out with my children um, and enjoy discovering new routes now. I mean, it does feel a little bit like you're going to be able to do things as a mum now yeah. that you haven't been able to do before. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Hi Anne's been working for six months to help two brothers with cystic fibrosis. How are you doing? Yeah. I'm going to do nah. Complete vital daily treatment. It's quite impossible. And reduce the strain on their mum Vicky. But just as she finishes, one of the boys becomes seriously ill. 
So Morgan, he's being admitted to hospital today. Mm. He's got a lung infection that's yeah. settled in. I mean, it does really bring it home how serious the condition is, doesn't it? He's got 50% of his lung capacity at the moment. I'm a little bit worried about mm. if he's up for trying out some of the games mm. that have been created. Fingers crossed. Yes. It's time for them to see what you've done. Very good to see you. Good to see, see you. Look at Ooh. that. Okay, so what do we have? What do we have? What do we have? We built a custom electronic piece, and now, and when you blow into it, it will transmit the amount of blowing into joystick movements that feed into a video game. Sounds pretty impressive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Give it a hard blow. Aiden gets a blue bear. So, do we notice anything about our game characters? We've tried to get them just like us. One <laughs> seems to have similar glasses to Morgan, and one seems to have <laughs> similar glasses to Aiden. Oh, he really does go. Don't forget to press the button to jump. He does go quite far. <laughs> How do you know what to do already? <laughs> <laughs> so, Nothing so Morgan's already before. done over ten breaths. Oh, okay. Blinded. Just in these few minutes without us really... You're surprised, Aidan? Yeah. Noticing. He's just done it without really realising and... and... Yeah. yeah. And he's cracking on with them as and well. And he's carrying on. So, how do we like the game? Good. Uh, so, I like it. Out of ten, Morgan. Ten. Yeah. Whoa! <laughs> Yay! Amazing. Aidan, how's uh, it looking to you? At the minute, ten. Yes, wow. we are really good. I'm so happy. Oh, thank you so, so happy so you much. like it, Morgan. Do you really like it, Morgan? Yeah, I do. <laughs> and this isn't all Hyannis created. Let's get the stand. All right, so have everybody got their devices? Give it a good breath. So you can see... Wow. So there's Aiden's... <laughs> oh, oh, my goodness, look at you, turn it on. Every time... So you're the red car, and every time you... <laughs> <laughs> do a good blow, the red car accelerates. It's not about the strength, it's about the length of the blow. So you've got to be able to blow okay, for... Yeah. There it goes. He's so taking far. off. Aiden's Come on, Red. Oh, look at the concentration on his face. We don't ever get that yeah. with physio. Yeah. But it's working. <laughs> and that coughing is what's needed for cystic yeah. fibrosis, yeah. isn't it? That's it loosening really mucus. Yeah. Come on, Red. Come on, bro. Come on, Morgan. Come on. This is the best thing that could ever happen for us because yeah. I just know that the hardest thing for him to do is physio and that is the, the only thing he needs to do to get better. <laughs> that I'm going to be doing it probably every day now. Like, I think people are going to I'm asking me to. I'm so happy to see these boys so happy. Just, it's phenomenal. And they're really, really into it. I just... <laughs> <laughs> Normally I say, get off your iPad and do your physio. Now I'll be right. saying, success. get on it and do your physio. <laughs> I don't know what oh, to say. Morgan is back home within a few days. We meet up with the family at the local football club where Dad Simon is a coach. He's putting the kids through their paces to help demonstrate High Ann's final gift to Vicky. I think meeting you and, and meeting your family what struck me the most was how much time and effort you put into holding this family together. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to create really two fixes, one for the boys and one for you. It's a dashboard that's really about bringing your family together. Cool. And it's the idea that as the boys are doing their exercises, you can actually log in and see their progress over time. OK. Like brilliant. a running live diary. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's brilliant. Flipping that guy, and that's very, very <laughs> clever, isn't it? <laughs> For all yeah, those who yeah. will be diagnosed in the Definitely. future, hopefully there are applications here that could really, really help them. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to say one thing, which was what Morgan said to me when you guys left. He didn't really know how to say it, but he said, this is actually a good part for cystic fibrosis, isn't it, Mum? Because normally it's all really bad. And for me, that was just the best thing he could ever, ever say. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Vicky. Oh, amazing. Oh. <laughs>
and our other inventions are also changing lives. Shamreen is using her app every day to live life, taking her kids to the park. Yeah.